Hello, Montana, and hello, world. This is Chris Islip from the Montana World Affairs Council, bringing you another episode of Connect Montana, where we bring the world to Montana and Montana to the world. This week, we're looking at the very vibrant arts community across Montana, together with our good partners from Arts Missoula. Today, we have a very special guest. Born in Montana, Monty Dolak has been a full-time working artist since 1974. The American West's changing landscape is often evident in his artwork. His carefully crafted magic realist works are infused with a sense of mystery, drama, and irony. His work resides in many public and private collections and has been exhibited in museums internationally. Recent solo exhibitions include the Palais des Nations at the United Nations Geneva and Helena Montana's Holter Museum of Art. He was selected by the Missoulian as one of the 100 most influential Montanans of the 20th century and received the Distinguished Fine Arts Alumni Award from the University of Montana. In 2020, he's featured in a solo exhibition at the Montana Museum of Art and Culture, as well as the release of a major new book of his artworks, Carbon Dating as Part of Altered State, a recent series of paintings and sculptures that explore the delicate balance between industry and nature in the Montana landscape. So Monty, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for Monty here in our participants. Well, well, well. Let's see if I can go over. Um, I'm here in partnership with, uh, as I said, our friends from Arts Missoula. And um, let's see here um, if we can maybe possibly go to Tom Benson and um, see if Tom could um, say a few words. Tom, over to you until Monty comes on. Thank you. Um, thanks, Chris. Uh, um, I just I just sent him an email. <laughs> Great, you, cool. As as you were asking, um, Monty, uh, you know you 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 gave a, a very good explanation uh, of uh, of his work, um, and uh, I've I've known I've known him for years, and I've known his work for a longer time. Um, uh, he's 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 been active in Missoula. Um, and around the world, but he's been active in Missoula since I think at least the early 70s uh, when, he, um, when he used to draw uh, uh, posters for movies at the old Crystal Theater. I remember <laughs> him doing that. Um, but, you know, in terms of international work, um, I have, um, uh, I, I was, I was going to talk to him about this when he came on and I, I might do this again. We, we, we manage the Sister City program for the city of Missoula. And we have two sister cities um, internationally, one in, in Neckarkamoon, Germany, and the other in Palmerston North, New Zealand. And uh, I, I know he's been, I think, to both of those. And um, when he, uh, when he, at Palmerston North, they actually, their city hall chambers is called the Missoula Room, uh, which <laughs> says a lot about Missoula, that, that a, a city hall on the other end of the world is named after our city. Um, and it's called the Missoula Room because there are um, numerous Monty Dolak paintings um, in, in the room itself. Um, and I'm, I'm, when I visited there, I, I, uh, I uh, was in the Missoula Room for a while and I, and I recognized a lot of his paintings. And I know he's, he's painted in, in uh, uh, he's, he's traveled in France and in other parts of Europe. Uh, and in Japan, I know, uh, to uh, uh, Montana's sister state of Kumamoto. Um, so I know he's, he's, he's uh, traveled the world, um, but um, I, uh, oh, there, I, there I he is. I think we have Monty on now. There he is. Hi, Monty. There we go. I think, let's see if you're muted at the moment. I think you might be muted. Can you? There. I think that's what? coming on now, Monty. It's a little bit glitched mm -hmm. at the moment. 
All right. Good. Yeah. Um, sunspots. I don't know. <laughs> Monty, I'll just say I, I've given you a very <laughs> glowing introduction. I, I'll just say thank you very much for joining us. Um, and Tom Benson just mentioned a, a few things as well while you were coming on. So I'm just going to pass the microphone directly over to you to talk to us a little bit about your work and your international travels. So over to you, Monty. All right. Well, thank you for having me, Chris. And uh, hello to everyone that's uh, tuning in. Uh, my travels relate to um, my love of, of art and, and travel, international travel. Uh, I think uh, also connecting with our um, sister cities has been interesting. I've had an opportunity to uh, exhibit my work in uh, Neckargemund, our sister city, sister uh, relationship in Germany, and also in uh, Palmerston North in New Zealand, and uh, as well as uh, Kumamoto, Japan. And uh, some of the work has traveled without me being able to be there. The budget for the work, but not always the artist. But uh, that uh, relationship uh, helped greatly with uh, it, the experience of uh, exhibiting work internationally and everything that goes into that. Um, but apart from that, I love to travel. I grew up in Montana in Great Falls, and most of the art I saw were small ones in art books, not very good ones. And the first time I went to France in the mid 70s and Europe with a backpack on my back and about $200 in my pocket, I remember walking into the Louvre and seeing Jericho's The Wreck of the Medusa, which is a huge, huge oil painting. And fortunately, there was a bench there. I had to sit down. I couldn't believe it. Um, it uh, was incredibly exciting for me to see these works in person. Um, and you have to travel there to, to do it. Uh, they're not going to come to you. Um, uh, when I came back from that trip, my, my life had been changed from uh, my first experience traveling through and down into North. Uh, and I think that uh, that when I came back to Montana, I saw it with fresh eyes. And uh, the relationships and friendships that I made on that trip continue today. So that was 1976. So uh, recently on a trip to uh, Europe and Italy, I stopped in Amsterdam and saw a friend I met on that first trip. We stayed close for many years. And uh, it, the same goes uh, uh, for travels to many places. But I really bring in a little bit different uh, um, as aspect or a quest. I call it my art quest when I travel because I always keep a journal and the journal is not journal is ideas, uh, notes for uh, possible works of art as I am a painter and printmaker. Um, the, uh, the experiences uh, of, uh, of, of travel and then bringing that to Mon back to Montana help me see my surroundings with new eyes. Because I think, um, and I've noticed this when I visit people, you can grow accustomed to what you have. We might, it, it, as a traveler, as someone from another area, might see it as a remarkable um, place or a historic uh, monument. Uh, and to the locals, it can just become like wallpaper. And that happens here too. Uh, so at times, uh, I was able, I, I, one friend that, uh, that took us touring uh, in France said, we're really in Paris, actually. We're really glad you're here, you're here because we don't usually go see these things. In fact, I've always wanted to go to Monet's Gardens, and I've never been there. And it's a half hour drive from Paris. Um, so uh, a bit like taking friends to the bison range here or up to Glacier Park, Flathead Lake. Um, 
or even just, uh, you know, our own community. Uh, there's a, a lot to discover. So part of what brings is that uh, probably about 15 years ago, I thought, you know, I'm going to take my pl plein air outdoor painting kit with me, small kit, and I'm going to set up and paint. And I did, but I realized that, you know, I'm new to this. I'm, I'm sitting down and painting something that um, here I could look around and go, I have a deep knowledge of this area. I've lived here for many years. Um, I, I think I have a, the essence of it. Whereas on those trips, it could be kind of superficial and I, I started to understand that. So I, I also uh, engaged in a lot of photography and reading, learning the language of the place I'm going to. So planning for a trip became like a six month or a year uh, odyssey and journey that was exciting. Fine, looking at maps. And uh, so not just taking a tour, going in uh, on the ground, um, renting a car or vehicle or um, means of transportation, to get to places that you became excited about through reading and through uh, uh, maybe talking with other people who would make suggestions. And I have many stories uh, to, that, uh, for instance, do I have time to tell one? Abs yes, absolutely, go ahead. So probably sometime about 22 years ago, I'm at a good friend's house, fact, Greg and Dorothy Patton. Greg Patton is a great writer of cookbooks and Dorothy has written over 150 children's books. One of the books was about the caves of Lascaux in France that hold some of the oldest and best preserved paintings in the world. And I had always wanted to go there. It's the Sistine Chapel of, uh, of uh, Neolithic art, 20,000 year old paintings. Um, I looked at her book and she got me very excited about the possibility of visiting it and said, when I went, I got, was able to get special permission from the Minister of Culture of France because the caves had been closed for a number of years due to, uh, when the caves were originally discovered and, uh, after World War II, many visitors went to them and introduced mold spores and uh, you know, contaminants that started growing on the cave walls. So it was a, an alarm went up, they closed them except for exceptional visits. And, and that included uh, members of uh, visiting dignitaries from uh, other countries, um, scholars and artists. So um, a year before, maybe 10 months before the trip, I uh, wrote a letter to the Minister of Culture, um, didn't hear back, hoping we could get a visit sometime around my 50th birthday in May. Uh, went ahead and planned the trip, studied French, looked at maps, um, got very, very excited about going there, heard nothing whether I would get to go to the caves or not. Two days before we were due to leave, I would pretty much decided that wasn't going to happen, but it didn't matter. Still get to go to the area, and uh, which is in the Dordogne area of uh, uh, southwestern France. And... Uh, Literally two days I, before our departure, I went out to the mailbox and there was a letter. And the French don't just write a letter. It, it had stamps and special markings on it. And uh, when I opened it, it was uh, a letter with uh, embossings and uh, several signatures from the Minister of Culture of France granting my, uh, me and my wife, Mary Beth Percival, special permission to visit the caves. May 23rd, four o'clock on the dot. So we were lined up there and I was expecting a crowd of people because yeah, I heard they take up to six or eight people at a time. Or not a crowd, but some other people. We stood at the gates where we were supposed to meet our guide, Bruno Desplat, who was the guardian of the caves. And uh, nobody, we got worried. We thought we missed it somehow. Pretty soon this gentleman walks over with his dog, uh, asks if we are the uh, visitors and uh, we show him our letters of transit. He opens the gates for us and uh, we went to his, his little guard shack uh, where we registered and I showed him some of my paintings. I really liked them. 
and uh, he, he spoke no English, I spoke a uh, little French. And uh, our, the common word that we, uh, that we shared was fantastic, amazing, fantastic. <laughs> because when we went into the caves, he, uh, it was just the two of us. And uh, it was a, one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. And uh, he, uh, you have to go through uh, two or three doors to get there. And uh, you know, you, you can't just walk in, you had to uh, decontaminate yourself to get in. And this was 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, when we were in the cave, uh, he, we looked at, the, there's a, amazing uh, paintings uh, done in uh, multiple uh, colors, all earth pigments, uh, at least 20,000 years old. Many of them may be uh, older or even maybe a little sooner, but with a, a continuum that we don't have here of style that had been passed on. And um, I was blown away how sophisticated they were. And I come from a uh, European uh, heritage my my on my mom's side uh, the British Isles on my dad's side Eastern Europe uh, Czechoslovakia and when I was in the cave I felt like I belonged there it was okay for me to be there these were my people and I had visited I have visited sites all over the world uh, Egypt South America the you know the South Pacific Islands where I, I felt like I was I was there as a, as a guest but yeah and connected because we all connected to the human spirit and uh, it, some of our earliest methods of communication were art. Uh, the uh, carving of, uh, of uh, uh, fertility goddesses uh, it, there are very early from uh, regions nearby. Um, and uh, he said, I want to show you something very special. And not everyone sees this. He turned off the lights. And it was pitch black. You're in the cave. And it was just, uh, and then he took his flashlight and he put it against the wall sideways so he could illuminate all the scribed drawings and, and notations that you couldn't see. They, they had been uh, inscribed with a sharp instrument into the cave wall. And that was a moment I'll never forget because I realized that there was this deep subtext to all of these wonderful paintings that, uh, like I said before, it's the, the Sistine Chapel of uh, Neolithic art. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's spiritual, it's not religious, you know. And anyway, that story of Nashville that, uh, um, you know, wonderful people, but they're nervous about traveling because of the risk and geez, what if I get out there and something happens? But uh, I have a quote from Mark Twain that I like, and then I'll, I'll back off here a little bit. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one's little corner of the earth all at one's life. Kind of fun. Are you still? Would you like me to keep speaking, or no? I, it, you just time for a question. Sorry, Monty, you froze. What? What? Thank you very much for. I mean, that is an incredible story about the caves in Lascaux. I mean, I, I probably others on here have, may have been there and know that you know you're not allowed in the original ones anymore. They have that entire setup where where you can. But but you were in the original. One. Extraordinary story. I'm sorry. I just since you quoted Mark Twain, I've got to come back. It seems apropos to say the other great quote um, that, that's fitting for your, your remarks is he also said, some of the worst things in my life never happened to me. So that, that seemed to fit in very well uh, with your remarks. Listen, we, we've, got some, uh, we've got some questions coming in from the participants, Monty. Here's one um, who's intrigued okay. with your art quest. And he asks, how have your travels impacted your love and respect for the natural world, which seems to infuse your work? One impressive thing was that area I was at in France, the Dordogne, people have been living there for 50,000 years and they didn't mess it up. It's, it's still nice. I mean, we did go through the Hundred Years' War and there was a, a lot of death and may, 
but somehow uh, there's still a sense of uh, uh, not overcrowding, not overdevelopment, not runaway, uh, uh, you know, strip malls kind of, uh, you know, uh, maybe the French just uh, really using a, a, a zoning to everyone's benefit. But um, the, uh, I think it helped me see my, where I live here. Uh, because many of the places I've traveled, especially in Europe, people have been making art for thousands of years, obviously, from Neolithic times uh, into uh, the uh, Middle Ages, uh, Renaissance, uh, you know, the amazing painting uh, that happened in Italy and, uh, and in uh, the Flemish artist that uh, was, and a lot of that, that became non-religious as well as, uh, you know, uh, many paintings at that time filling the, uh, being uh, uh, commissioned by the church. Um, so coming back here, I realized that this was virtually untouched. You know, we uh, Native American uh, people, uh, the sailors, um, may have lived here for ten thousand years, and uh, they they have the stories that they pass down. And uh, and I I have uh, read and listened to many of those stories, the mythologies of how these people came to be. One interesting story, and this was brought to me by the mythologist Joseph Campbell. I was reading uh, about uh, how people got fire, and this happened all over the world. And uh, people tell stories about their cultures through stories about animals, and oftentimes use an animal to, uh, that's a helper. And, uh, in one, uh, I forget the tribe, but in one Native American uh, story, uh, much like Prometheus, who brought fire to the, the gods, the Greek gods, and was punished for it. Uh, excuse me, he brought fire to the people and was punished by the gods. Um, woodpecker, who lived in the trees, the legend is that Woodpecker stole fire from the trees and brought it to the people. And uh, Woodpecker, especially the pileated Woodpecker, has a an amazing red crest that looks like uh, uh, it's, it's a flame. And one of the pieces in my recent exhibit is a, a painting based on that, just that simple story. Um, so I think uh, the international travel for me got even in international and comparative mythology as a springboard for image making. Um, and I kind of go back and forth between bringing in an animal spirit advisor in my paintings and more recently just the pure landscape as a uh, as a mad as a magic place a magic realist place itself uh, without maybe adding that that uh, animal character although i have one going on right now that has that has that that's fine and it's in progress <laughs> Did that answer the question? Yeah, th thanks for that, Monty. And if you've not seen Monty's exhibition, sadly, you've missed it at the Montana uh, Museum of Art and Culture. But that the work that you mentioned, Stealing Fire, um, what was a particularly beautiful piece amongst many. Um, I'm just going to see if um, if our friend Tom Benson from Arts Missoula wants to come in um, on anything uh, as our time is running near. Tom, anything over to you? Oops. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, great to see you, Monty. Thank you for for, Hi, uh, for coming today. Uh, you mentioned um, uh, traveling to our sister cities and, and our sister state of Kumamoto. And before you, before you came on, I, I, I mentioned that you had been there and, and other places as well. Um, and I, I mentioned that um, when I visited uh, Palmerston North a year and a half ago, uh, I went to their city chambers and which is called the Missoula Room. And it's, uh, and it filled with very familiar paintings of yours. Um, and, you know, it struck me that, you know, you said at the beginning that, you know, you see yourself as first an artist and also a, a, a traveler. Um, but really, you know, by, by, by rep, you, you actually are representing Missoula, you're, you're, you're also um, a diplomat. Um, and, and, you know, cultural diplomacy is, is uh, you know, a, a, a major 
push of what we do with our sister cities and everything else. And I just kind of wanted to ask you, um, you know, how, how you see yourself in the whole concept of cultural diplomacy, not just with our sister cities, but, but anywhere. Well, one of the interesting things about having made so many of my images into posters or commissioned posters that most of which have to do with art, culture, uh, uh, environmental issues, uh, conservation, uh, hum uh, humanities, and, uh, uh, and such, and uh, do an addition of posters, and they travel. They're like little seeds. They, they, I don't know where they go. They, they're, they're sold. They go someplace, and uh, they go up on a wall, or they travel with people as gifts. And uh, I get stories from people who um, have been traveling and said, oh, we have, I was in uh, this cafe in Berlin and sitting there and I looked over and it was one of your posters. Or uh, my friend Daniel Miller that was guiding a, a group into the Himalayas um, and he's at 25,000 feet in, in, a, in a, uh, a Tibetan uh, home, the very, very, you know, a humble home with candles. Uh, and on the wall was one of my posters that somebody had brought all the way there. And this was 20 years ago, but it was smudged by the, uh, the use of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the candles inside. But uh, how, how interesting is that, the way these things um, can go? And you know, the posters are basically um, kind of a democratic way of sharing art. They're affordable. You can transport them fairly easily. A lot of people just take it and roll it up and when they get to wherever they're going. Maybe you're going to college here and you took it back to where your parents live and uh, you put it back up on the wall and, and uh, they go, we should frame that for you. And, and uh, yeah, you know, the, the cultural ambassador aspect is uh, that happened in Ireland. Uh, when uh, Jeff Sutton arranged an exhibition of uh, artists from our region, and we traveled to four, four major museums in uh, in, uh, in Ireland, and the the opening uh, kicked off at the um, in, in Dublin at uh, the ma the major museum there. Uh, I'm, I can't think of the name of it right now, but the ambassador from the United States was there and gave opening remarks. And the artists were there and then other uh, people, it was the Bank of Ireland Fine Arts uh, Center, which is right at the gates to Trinity College in this remarkable building. Um, and uh, uh, somebody had to get up and give remarks. So I got up and gave remarks. And, uh, and then we went kind of went through the group and uh, a number of diplomats there and uh, there uh, it, just the the connection was so positive it was it was uh, then we sat down and played some piano and then people go up and go oh it's like American blues piano you know I, I know this Irish tune and uh, so uh, the same thing happened to me recently in uh, in Argentina Buenos Aires we went into a cafe because it was so hot and it was a tango cafe. And uh, the gentleman that owned it was one of the master tango dancers uh, and teachers. And he had traveled in America and it had taught the people that needed to dance on, let's say in the movies, you're in the movies, you've got to do the tango in this special scene. He, he had taught, uh, you know, uh, the, the, some, the, some uh, various people. Uh, and we just happened into his cafe and hardly anyone was in there. And he had the, the piano and I started playing a little piano and then their normal piano player comes in every day, came in. Really nice guy, terrific tango pianist. And uh, I was showing him some blues and rock riffs and he was showing me some tango. Um, it, it was, uh, you know, and when we left, it was like we were old friends. And it was just it, it's so neat. Just. It, I don't know, and I always take uh, wherever I travel little cards that I've done um, of, you know, especially the ones of Montana and uh, you know, Glacier Park, Yellowstone, the Missoula Valley, uh, the rivers, uh, and just give those as gifts. It's like here's where here's where we live, and uh, if you're ever there, come visit. And uh, so it's, it's scatter those little things about, and uh, 
yeah, it always it always brings an interesting conversation and a connection. It's like, oh, I met somebody from Montana once, and it's like, who's that? Oh, I know him. <laughs> Montana's a a a, uh, a big state with just uh, you know one main street that kind of connects all the cities and towns. Um, anyway, that, that some of those uh, have been uh, some of those experiences have been so uh, meaningful to me, at, at, uh, and, and hopefully to the, to the people that I met. That uh, you know, uh, politics aside, uh, American you know American politics, just that person to person or small group to small group connection. I know Tom Benson has just been at the forefront of this for many years. Just to really. Uh, you know, uh, working on uh, connecting people. Um, you know, it's it's like they might not appreciate one aspect of America, but you know, it's like, oh, I, I like all the people I met. It's just maybe there were other aspects of American non diplomacy that, uh, you know, were off putting. Uh, so that people to people contact. So, so important to travel and to, uh, and to host travelers when they come. You know, and uh, to uh, remain open to ideas from um, other countries, and uh, you know, um, it's like Rick Steves, his uh, through the back door. First time I went to Europe, I had, and Rick Steves is a travel author, as most of you know, or really, you know, uh, has his PBS uh, broadcast. I had his first book with me. And I still have it, it, and it was called Through the Back Door. And he had just gone to Europe and and written this book, a funky little book with, uh, you know. And uh, his his attitude was through the back door, you know, go in and meet people, go into a, a, a little cafe and sit down and, uh, you know, don't just stay in, the, you know, you're isolated in your big group or hotels. Um, uh, because sometimes when people travel, they travel in a big group, you know, you, you'll see a, the, the flag and there'll be a large group of people that move through. And, uh, I can understand that because, uh, you know, language, uh, let's say you're from China or Japan and you're in uh, Europe and you're just you know, two different language groups. So it's, and, and having a good guy, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, when you take a side street and walk down the side street and uh, maybe find a little cafe or a, uh, a, uh, a little shop and uh, go in and uh, meet, meet the people. Um, there's a lady that I met uh, that has a wonderful pigment shop in Venice, not too far from uh, the, uh, well, it's, it's, it's off the main uh, uh, canal quite a ways. But I've visited her probably three times. Every time I, I get a chance to go to Italy and to Venice, um, I buy pig, pigment, bring it back. And uh, it, it, the Venetians, the Italians, and, and she was lamenting. She goes, there's so few shops like ours anymore. You know, it's like a lot of them have just become uh, t-shirt shops. And uh, there used to be more shops that really had this wonderful handcraft and amazing. And uh, just to establish uh, connections with, with people who could, in fact, I have some of that pigment right here. And, uh, and it's, it helps, it, there's a, and I know I go on and on. There's a story about the blue pigment that comes from Afghanistan and it, it's uh, been hard to get and uh, it was called uh, uh, when the Renaissance painters used it in their skies they they called it uh, sacred blue or sacre bleu so you've heard the French go sacre bleu sacred it's the uh, uh, it was so hard to get and so expensive um, that uh, uh, it was you know, uh, only used it for skies that angels were coming out of. I have some. <laughs> <laughs> and that's lapis lazuli is the, is the pigment. Well, Monty, the best comes from Afghanistan. I, I mean, th that, that's another incredible story. Thank you so much. Um, you know, first of all, for coming on the show and, and sharing a little slice of your life, but, you know, important to all of us is just to hear your views on, on how your travel and how your engagement outside of the United States in the world has affected you as an artist, has affected your work, and, you know, your points about person-to-person -person contact and Tom's question on diplomacy, I think are 
probably you know as vital today as they've ever been really and and so thank you so much for for sharing all of that we've run just a bit over time i don't mind because it's so interesting and i, I just want to say thanks again to to monty and to tom benson and our friends at arts missoula for supporting us uh in bringing you the series um arts international so very quickly Tomorrow at 9 a.m., we have Rafael Chacon. He's the director of the Montana Museum of Art and Culture that uh, we mentioned earlier. And then on Thursday at noon, we've got Terry Elander from the Missoula Children's Theater, who also has quite extraordinary international programming. So please join us on those. This is, by the way, Monty, our 30th show so far. We've managed to reach Nearly 2,000 people have, have participated in this. Um, and so if you're interested in looking at those previous shows, for example, we had Senator John Tester, Congressman Greg Gianforte were, were both on in July. Have a look at our YouTube channel. If this kind of thing interests you, join us again. We have these shows two or three times a week just to keep us uh, engaged in the world, bringing the world to Montana and Montana to the world. Once again, thank you, Monty, and thank you everyone for joining. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris.